All right, hello, welcome everyone. So I'm really excited to be here. I realized looking back on everything that David first emailed me in the spring 2017. So believe it or not, this has been in the works for over a year and a half. Um, so high expectations. Um, so I'm a marine biologist, I work here at BU. I started here about a year ago. Um, and I'm a coral scientist, I'm a coral hobbyist. My husband jokes that corals are also my hobby. Um, so I'm going to share some of my passion about corals with you tonight. Um, and we'll save all the questions to the end. I'll be around at the end of the event so you can feel free to ask questions. I'd also really like to thank the uh, Boston University Biology Department. Um, they supplied this room for us. It's an amazing room. Um, and the Boston University Marine Program also helped. So thanks to that. So to start, People often ask me, what are corals? Or when I ask people, what is a coral? They often come up with one of three things, a rock, an animal, or a plant. And technically, none of these things are incorrect, but it's actually all of the above. Corals are all of the things. So first, corals are animals. So this is a picture I took in Micronesia, a close-up of a coral. And when you, if you were to zoom in with a microscope, you'd see these tiny polyps. So this is what coral nerds call polyps. They're individuals, they look like anemones, and they look like Nemo's home. Um, and there's a million of them over the coral, and they're all just corals, but they're genetically identical, and they are animals. And they are related to us. Who would have thought? So corals are actually cnidarians, so they're right here. Very cool, they're also related to jellyfish and Nemo's home the anemone, and then this is us up here, we're chordates, but we are related. I know I wanted to put up something benign, so I picked the queen. Um, so next, corals are also rocks. So if you zoomed in on a coral, and actually some of you grabbed a coral at the front, that's actually the rock part of it, so that's its calcium carbonate skeleton. So if you zoom in on that, it would look something like this. So it's very beautiful, they create these amazing structures, um, and corals are actually kind of also like us. They have their skeleton on the inside and their tissue is on the outside. So very similar to us. So this is something cool I found on Twitter, my new favorite hobby. Um, so this is the coral skeleton here and then this is a 3D printed version of the, of the um, coral if you sliced it in half. So you can actually see its stomach here. Um, its stomach is the same as its butt. Kids love that. Um, and corals produce the skele beautiful skeletons, these diverse skeletons, crazy brain-looking skeletons, branching, bouldering, you name it, I feel like corals have figured it out as far as beauty of skeletons, much more interesting than ours. And when you look at a reef, it looks something like this. Huge diversity of corals. This is a coral reef in Palau. Um, just a ton of diversity of shapes, and all of this is the calcium carbonate structure. You can think of it as its skeleton. Okay, so also corals are plants. So why are they plants? Well, if you zoom in, again, so now we're looking at a single coral polyp. Now you all have the nerd term. So this is the polyp. Inside the tentacles are all of these algal cells. So that's the plant part of the coral. So you have the coral, the brain coral, my favorite coral. Then if you look close up, this is under fluorescent microscope, zooming in on the polyp that looks just like an anemone. Every single red dot you see here is an algal cell. And that algal cell is really important for corals. So this is what the algal cells look like in culture. So they're just pretty boring, actually, but fundamental to the coral's biology. So corals live in a symbiotic relationship with these algae. And the symbionts provide photosynthetic byproducts to the coral. So without the symbiont, the coral essentially starves. So the symbiont photosynthesizes and translocates carbon sugars to the coral and feeds them. And in tropical waters, the waters are very nutrient poor. Um, but they're also high light. So the coral has this really cool thing where it has algae that can photosynthesize and give it food. And it's a symbiotic relationship because they both give each other something. Um, and the, the algae get the CO2, so they need that for photosynthesis. So the coral give them that, and then they also give them a free home. So it's kind of a good deal for both. So where do they live? So this is a map of the world, and everywhere you see a dot is a coral reef. Um, and the grand majority of reefs really live 25 north to 25 south, um, as far as latitude. There's a few high latitude reefs, but really by and large, that's where they live. And you may say, how do they live in so many places because they can't move? So I'm going to tell you about the coolest thing about a coral, which is its sex life. So they have what's called broadcast spawning. So it's very cool. Once a year, all the corals 
um, reproduce on the reef on the same night. So in the warmest month of the year, eight days after the full moon, and however many hours after sunset, depending on the species, all of the corals release what we call gamete bundles, and they look like this. So these are, um, these are the hermaphroditic corals, so they're bundles of eggs and sperm that are chocked full. Of, each of them have about eight eggs and then millions of sperm, and they're full of lipids, so they're really buoyant, and they float to the surface, and that is where they create these really beautifully smelling spawn slicks. Coral biologists love swimming in them. Um, but this is where fertilization occurs. I know we have weird hobbies. Um, so if you imagine all of this are just millions of gametes waiting to fertilize each other. Um, and the interesting thing is that hermaphroditic corals, while they have eggs and sperm, they cannot self-fertilize. So you have to produce at the same time of, as other individuals on the reef, otherwise you can't make babies. So you need to get your timing right. So during the, in this spawn slick, they fertilize and cute, uh, create these cute little coral larvae, the cutest babies besides mine at home. And then these little larvae have cute little behaviors, and they swim in the ocean, and then about five, when they're about five days old, they receive cues emanating from the reef telling them like, hey, this is where you should settle. And that's what we call settlement, but look at how cute they are. This is a guy swimming around, waiting to try to find its home. And so the red part is actually the butt, so they swim butt first, and then the green part is its head. And then when it makes the decision to settle, the most important decision of a coral's life, the red butt attaches to the ground and then they metamorphose and then they produce something that looks like this. And this, we call this recruitment or settlement or metamorphosis and it's the most important decision in a coral's life because this is where they're gonna live forever. So if you can think back and reflect on your very first apartment, <laughs> I mean seriously, not for me. Um, so corals sucks for them, they get stuck there forever. From here they secrete their calcium carbonate skeleton, reproduce asexually after getting their symbiotic algae. Then they reproduce asexually to produce the colonies we see on the reef. So pretty cool sex life. Um, I'm going to show you some video. This is coral spawning footage from the Flower Garden Banks National Marine Sanctuary. So I told you that they're hermaphroditic, but I actually lied because some are gonochoristic, which means they have male and female colonies. So this is a male, and this is a male's sperm going into the water column. You can see that it's fully saturating the water. It becomes totally cloudy. And then that cues the females, these guys, to go. So the males go first, then the females release their eggs. And for this, for this species, the eggs actually become fertilized right away. And then I'm going to show you the hermaphroditic ones, which are my favorite. Um, they're huge colonies, these ones at the flower garden banks. Here they go. It's super synchronous across a colony. You can see that setting, right? I mean, come on, guys. Corals are the best hobby. And then we see the, you can see how they're positively buoyant, and they'll slowly go to the surface and create those spawn slicks. And you can see these corals at the flower garden banks. Everything's bigger in Texas, including their corals. Um, so if we zoom out one more time, you'll see that these colonies are absolutely massive. So it's really cool. They're like the size of small cars. Um, so if you want to add something to your bucket list, I highly recommend coral spawning in Texas. Um, so that's the first part of the talk. So 